Yo, family, how you doing? It's your brother, Brian Mayer. Peace, peace to you, peace to your own, peace to your family, peace to your community, peace to your ancestry, peace to my community, peace to my ancestry, and peace to the nation that you are and they are building. Peace also to the God of forces, to the great spirit above, the mother below. Hope y'all ready. More time. I hope y'all ready. You know, um, for years I have been trying to figure out where the battle lines are going to be drawn. And I'll tell you, family, we are looking the wrong way. We think this... The battle lines... This is... Part of this war is going to be physical. So we need to prepare ourselves physically and mentally. Um, Nonviolence, which Dr. King promoted, ironically <clears throat> can and I, I've done a lot when I say I've, I've prayed and meditated on this for a long time I'm talking four years before I tell you this nonviolence can actually include preparation for war and preparation for self-defense nonviolence does not does not exclude violent acts now, the definition of violence in Western society is very fluid. And we need to admit this. Now, in African society, violence is anything that brings harm to the other person. Dr. King didn't realize it, but he was utilizing the African concept of violence. So anything that brings pain to the mental field, to the emotional field, to the spiritual field, to the, to the soul field, to the body, to the physical field, um, or even to the family field, to the community, that's violence. So he was, using, he was using our way of viewing violence to talk to uh, the broader society, which is great. What our ancestors need us to now realize is that was a test. That was a test for the entire society. The society and the civilization failed that test. The Western vision of nonviolence was actually more demonstrated by Malcolm X. Malcolm X, who understood the Western view of violence, even though he was African, and he was unapologetically African. Actually had it correct. We as black Afro people, we need to understand this. We need to be studying martial arts. We need to be preparing ourselves for the cosmic duty of protecting not only our families and our communities, but also this planet. Because we are in the throes of a severe demonic um, overrunning. The cosmos is responding to this. They're sending in, you know, reinforcements. But <clears throat> we need to now understand that there is a demonic force. That is trying to overrun this planet. And we, we are so used to uh, this watered down version of spirituality we call Christianity and Islam. That we don't enable ourselves often, not all of us, but some of us, to see real evil in front of us. We can talk about evil when it's in spirit form, but most of us, we have literally evil people around us that are in human form. They have taken human form. Invasion of the body snatchers, ladies and gentlemen, but they've taken human form and we can't even recognize them because we don't believe that this is possible. Some of these people look just like us. Others 
look just like white folks. Others look just like, you know, yellow people and all that. But we, we, we don't even know. And look, I, I blame the church and the mosque for this. Because the church and the mosque don't teach you about real demons. They don't teach you about possession. They don't teach you that there are hundreds of different forms of real demons. That there are a lot of these, what we call demons, are only, for lack of a better term, extra terrestrials. These are entities that technically aren't even extraterrestrials. They're intraterrestrials. Uh, they're in this, this area, um, which they were supposed to be locked in. But there's a rebellion. And now they're coming up and they've been coming up to try to get off the planet. We don't know any of this. We don't know about the cosmic war. We don't know um, about the about the true cause of uh, the way that the planet is. We don't know about a lot of things that have to do with why we are in the state that we're in right now. It's not just simply uh, colonialism, which colonialism itself tells a story. I'm not talking. I'm not talking about the actions, family. I'm talking now about the word. It tells a story. This. You know, understand the Bible, when it comes to some of these prophecies, these prophecies ain't your friend. Oh, well, God ordained it. God didn't ordain nothing. I want you to think about something. We are told throughout our lives that there are beings that live above us, that live below us, that live a lot longer than we do. And in fact, the Bible, if we take it as somewhat real, says that people once lived 900, 800, 1,000 years. Well, if that was possible on this realm, on the upper realms, on the lower realms, people would have to live five or ten times long, as long as that. Why? Because your filament would actually be lighter. That's your light. That, that would be lighter. And you wouldn't be carrying around this heavy body. So in those upper realms, you can live to be what we would say 10,000 years. You can live to be 20,000 years, 30,000 years, 40,000 years. Down here, we'd say, oh my God, that's a lot of time. But up there, what's 50,000 years? I mean, if you're just looking at the trek of our solar system around the center point, I mean, you're, you're talking like, I think it's 26,000 years. So if you're alive for 50,000 years up there, you're basically alive for two cycles. It's not that long. We think it's that long because we live like this and it's it's a heavy life, but up there, not that long. Absolutely not that long. My point is this. If you are living 50,000, or in some cases, 100,000 Earth years, and you are a rogue person who is against the project of helping Earth to develop the way that it's supposed to develop, how much trouble would it be for you to into it to somebody else concepts of a future that you wanted to build. What am I saying? I'm saying the angels, we always assume that the angels are always on our side. They already told you in the book, there's fallen angels, there's good angels. And guess what? You can't tell them apart. I know we like to think so. So we make the, the, the fallen angels darker with 
you know, fire behind him and whatever. But no, you can't tell them apart. So you have an angel that's going to live 100,000 years, 50,000 years, who is working for Lucifer, who's working for so-called Lucifer, so-called um, Satan. And they want to change the way that the earth is going. What do they do? They come down to a prophet. And they say, oh, yeah, by the way, uh, here's some new prophecies. In order to have Christ come back, you got to have darkness come. With, there, there needs to be all these wars going on. There needs to be all this um, dishevelment and, and, and disability going on. So they give you a false vision of the world that you are supposed to be upholding for the divine. God didn't ordain that. We were supposed to be past this nonsense. He didn't ordain any of it, but we don't know that. Because we have fallen in love with the Bible to the point where we don't even criticize it. We don't look at it critically. Now, on the opposite side, my, my uh, Egyptian friends who love Egypt will be quick to say, oh, well, they... They, they prophesied this. So they told us this was all going to happen. No, they warned us this was going to happen. We were supposed to try to avoid this. They took a look at what the other side was doing, and they gave us a roadmap and said, this is what they're going to be doing. You need to try to, some way or another, you know, get around this. Stop this from happening. This is the war that we find ourselves in. And we don't even know it. Because we are surrounded by, we're surrounded by concepts that bleed our minds of, of, of the reality. So we don't know real evil because we don't see real evil. We don't know real war because we don't see real war. And yet that's going to change. Unfortunately, because that's going to lead to a lot of devastation, I think. The funny thing is, we as black folks, we have the ability to stop it. And that's why they're keeping us locked down right now. And I, you know, when I first started doing some of this work, I, um, I would hear people talk about us being locked down and I'd be like, what are you talking about? <clears throat> I get it now. I get it. I see how we are manipulated. I see how we are kept away from who we truthfully are. I see it. And we got to we got to get off of that because man, this is this really is war is here and when we move through these next two decades we're going to see it even more. And if we ain't ready, it's going to be a long night for us. It's going to be a long night for us. So we might want to get our butts ready. All right, guys. <clears throat> I'll see you later. And uh, sorry for the throat. Peace.